When talking about a system, like an electric circuit, we want to say how the output relates to the input. If the system is a circuit, then the input might be a voltage applied at one end, and the output might be the current or voltage measured at the other end. Whatever the case may be, there's a type of analog system that we prefer because it helps us determine the output for a given input, and that is a linear time invariant, or LTI system. In this video, I'm defining linear time invariance and why it's a useful property for analog signal processing. It's easy to remember the two defining properties for a linear time invariant system. First, it's linear, and second, it's time invariant. That's it, really. But what do these two properties mean? They both refer to how the output changes when you change the input. Let's say you have two different input signals. Input 1 gives you output 1, and input 2 gives you output 2. If your system is linear, then if you give input 1 plus input 2 into your system, then the output will be output 1 plus output 2. If your system is time invariant, then delaying an input, say by 5 seconds, means the output will also be delayed by 5 seconds. A standard way to define a system is by its impulse response. The impulse response is the time varying output when the input is an impulse, which is like a very quick spike. If you have an analog system that is linear time invariant, or as we say LTI, then you can find the output for any input by performing a mathematical operation called convolution between the input and the system impulse response. That sounds really helpful, but continuous time convolution is usually messy. It includes an integral that can be tricky to solve. Not only that, but it's hard to learn about systems and how to design them just by looking at their impulse responses. So why should you care about whether an analog system is LTI? The key idea is that you can take an LTI system and translate it from the time domain to a different domain where it's much easier to work with, such as the Laplace domain. Many of our upcoming videos on analog signal processing will be considering systems and signals within the Laplace domain. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching this series on signal processing. There's also a lecture notes PDF in the description. You can leave a comment with any feedback or subscribe to stay up to date. See you next time.